Hi, my name's Tim. Your name's Tim and Yvette. We're gonna go through your trailer with you. The trailer does have a seven-way holder behind the pin box on the front of the trailer. We're gonna go down into the front compartment. It does have a 50 amp power cord. It is 30 foot long. In the front compartment, you do have your hydraulic pump storage in behind the black casing here, but you also have your Swintec uh, slide room motor brain box inside there. It does have a metal bottom in the bottom of the front storage. This black thing behind us does not move. I don't care how many times you hit your head against it. But it does have a light switch here on the side that will actually turn the LED lights on the front of the trailer on. Little blue lights. We're going to go ahead and start down this side over here. In your front compartment is your rain controls for your six point leveling. Has an on and off button, an up and down, an enter button, retract, and auto level. Does have the sticker right here on the side of the door that walks you through each procedure is hooking up and unhooking of the trailer. We also have the converter in the top of the compartment over here on this side, and we have one battery on the trailer. We'll step right past that. We're going to go into the water fill compartment. In the water fill compartment, there is a light on either side of the compartment that can be turned on by hand and can be turned towards motion sensor. Also has a battery disconnect so that if you don't want the trailer drawn from your 12 volt battery, you can turn the battery disconnect to the opposition and pull the key out. It is also solar prepped up on top. It does have a digital readout that tells you exactly what the solar panels is putting out to the battery. In your water fill compartment, you do have a water canister on the right hand side. There is a filter in the second drawer in the kitchen for the filter and a wrench. You do have your first black tank flush, which will flush the black tank on the half bathroom. You have a galley handle for the kitchen sink water to drain. You also have an outside shower, hot and cold running water on it. it. Is a quick disconnect hose that connects in and out of there. There is a light for this compartment. And on your cable, two satellite hookups on this side over here. Does have your dry camping where you're going to pull from the tank to the faucets. Your power for tank fill. You have a city water connect, a winterized mode, and a sanitation mode. Each one of the diagrams, when you're going to fill the freshwater tank, or you're going to drain from the freshwater tank to the faucets or city water hookup, you'll have to turn the red, green, black, or white, and blue valves. Your white connection in the front is your city water connect. Your second black one back down here is your bathroom, main bathroom black tank flush. Not too bad for that. We're going to go to the furnace next. It's going to suck cold air in the back side of it. Hot air out the front side. I always suggest putting a mud dauber screen over the outside of the furnace for the simple fact that mud daubers love that smell and they'll go right in there. They build their little dirt nest and it clogs your furnace up. Hot water heater is next. Hot water heater is a 10 gallon water heater. It is gas and electric. The electric switch is in the lower left hand corner on the outside. You want to pop the pop off out to make sure you have water coming out of it before you run on electric or gas. Also has an anode rod. That is where you'll drain the hot water heater for winterizing and dewinterizing and in between long trips. But an anode rod actually draws all the impurities to it, eats up that rod instead of eating up the inside of the tank. Anytime the steel rod in the center is showing, it's time to replace it. Down underneath the two inch white valve in the front is your freshwater drain. That's where you'll drain your freshwater tank when you're draining the water out of it. It has two low water drain points. The red line is the hot side of the water system. The blue line is the cold side of the water system. You'll use those for winterizing and dewinterizing of the trailer. You also have your 
first dump valve back here, which your galley tank is in the water fill compartment, but your half bath black tank is up underneath the metal here in the back, up on the frame. Lug nuts on the trailer has been torqued at 110 pounds. That's what's recommended on the side. They are aired up to pressure, which is 110 pounds on the side of the tires cold. They also have the nitro gas in them instead of having air. But if you're out on the road and one would happen to come empty, you can put air in on top of it. We do have a stove vent for the stove vent hood range to work properly. The two tabs have to be lifted out, allows the flapper to flap. When you're in travel, you want to make sure those two flappers are pushed back down in. We're going to come back to the big compartment back here in the back. Automatically, it does have struts on it to hold it up. Blue handle lifts up on it. Drawer will slide out. Pretty good sized drawer. We're going to slide it back in, lock it back into place. Another sewer dump valve back here in the back. We're going to go through the piece of plastic here on the bottom skirting. There's three handles inside there. There is a gray handle, a black handle, and a gray two. The gray one will be your bathroom sinks. Your black handle will be your back main bathroom toilet water. And then the second one will be for your washer dryer prep. And then your little cap just goes back on. This just accesses you into the valves. That way you don't have to go up underneath the metal. There is a 50 amp power cord in the front compartment of the trailer. It goes on the same way this one does. Makes a quarter of a turn. It is 30 foot long. 30. And then we're going to go into the back compartment. The back compartment back here does have magnets to hold it up. It does have a 110 outlet on the side of the cabinet. <coughs> Pretty good size storage compartment back here in the back. We're going to come around to the very back of the trailer. We're going to lift the back storage door up. It is magnetically holding back here too. We are prepped for a backup camera up top. And that is a pretty good size storage. I'll come around to this side over here. It does have another 110 outlet on the wall. It does have a light switch. It turns a set of LED lights on right through the center of both of them big compartments. It also has a quick disconnect gas hose line down here at the bottom that if you had an outside grill, you can actually hook your outside grill up out here, a uh, barbecue pit. It does have two external speakers on the outside of the trailer. We're going to lift up the outside kitchenette. There it does have two light switches on the wall. One turns a set of white lights on underneath the cabinets. The other one turns a blue light underneath the cabinets. It does have an outside sink. It's got hot and cold running water to it. You'll need to remember to winterize that when you winterize too. An outside refrigerator that is 110 only. Has to be plugged into 110 for that outside refrigerator to work. Does have a little storage shelf right above it. <coughs> We're going to go up here just past the door. It does have another porch spray on this side over here that you can hook the same blue hose <coughs> that hooks to your outside shower and you'll have cold water on this side of the trailer. Also has a 110 outlet over here on this side of the trailer that is also GFI protected by the outlet in the kitchen. Other side of your main big compartment, there is a 110 outlet just inside of it and a, a park cable or antenna hookup for a TV. Does have your spare tire in there. It is aired up to pressure, which is 110 pounds on the side of it cold. And it has another one of those two-way lights. It can either be on 24-7 or motion sensor, so when you open the door that you can see into it. One more compartment up here at the front is your propane. 
<coughs> little handle on the front of the tray, slides the tray out. <coughs> on your gas regulator, it's pointed towards the back bottle. It is red inside the eye. As soon as we would happen to open up the bottle back there, it turns green on the inside. As soon as the back bottle runs out, it will turn back to red on the inside indicating that the bottle it's pointed to is empty and it has to pick up from the other one then all you have to do is flip your regulator over to this side here work off of it while you take the one in the back to have it refilled then your tray is going to slide back in place and locks into place now we're going to go to the front door we're going to open it all the way up once the trailer's on the side, level from side to side, front to back, the next thing is the proper fit of the front step. On the front step, there is a little push button on each one of the legs at the bottom. There's 18 holes in the legs itself so that you can adjust. But the main thing on the steps is it has to come out <coughs> and lay flat in the threshold. That's for the proper fit of the door. And them steps look heavy, but they're not. They are strut assisted. So they come out slow and they'll go back up slow too. We're going to go just inside the trailer. It does have a working fire extinguisher on the left hand side as we step in. <coughs> we're going to come up to our control panel and we are going to run the main slide out. That'll be the two slides right here in the kitchen area. And those are hydraulic slides. Then we're going to run our awning out. Now that the skirt's starting to hang down on the outside of the awning, we're going to let it hang straight up and down. We're going to step back outside and we are going to show you how the arms work. Each one of the awning arms on the bottom has a pinch point that you can pull down against that puts the pitch of the rain coming off this corner here. You can do the same thing with the back arm. With the back arm, it's pretty high up off the ground. <clears throat> so you might have to have a step ladder to get up to it, but it says the same arm as the front one does. You pull down on it, it puts the pitch of the rain going off that corner there. It also has a set of LED lights underneath the canvas, up against the trailer, and a porch light. <clears throat> it is also prepped for a camera above the door for security, and prepped for cameras on the front on either side of the running lights. <coughs> We're going to step back up into the trailers. We're going to come back to the monitor panel. You have your main lights, which is the lights right above us. Your entry lights, which is your amber light for the porch light. A hall light, awning light, step light, and a Bluetooth connect. When you go back up here to your tanks, it shows you that the fresh tank is empty. All the holding tanks in the trailer are empty. As they fill up, they'll show one-third, two-thirds full. And this is the condition of your battery over here on the right-hand side, which shows you the battery is fully charged. We're going to come right down below the switches for the lights. The first one is the gas side of the hot water heater. Anytime you push it, the blue light will come on on it. It will go through two lighting processes to light on gas. For any reason it doesn't light on gas, the red light will come back on. Your second button is your water pump button, which puts water between the fresh water tank and the faucets. And then your third button is tank heaters that are underneath the trailer, underneath all the holding tanks underneath the trailer. Your first switch down here at the bottom extends your awning in and out. Your second one does your main slide rooms in the kitchen area in and out. Then you have your bedroom slide, 
your door side, off door side, slide room in the front, living room area, and the door side room. So we're going to open them all back up. We already opened up the main one. We're going to open a bedroom's already open. So we're going to do the off door side living room. Now we're going to do the door side one. All the rooms have bubble seal on the inside and outside of the slide rooms to protect them from water coming to the inside. They all need to be lubricated with any kind of a clear lubricant silicone spray. It just makes the rubbers more pliable, they flip back and forth easier, and they will last longer. The two buttons right down below us is the main set of lights above us in the living room and kitchen area. It also has an inverter that you can turn on when you're not hooked into shore power that will take juice from the two 12 volt batteries on the front of the trailer and make 110 for your refrigerator while you're traveling down the road. The two GFI resettable breakers here on the side are for the inverter. They control the inverter while it's making 110 for the refrigerator. The little cap right down here below us is for the refrigerator that holds your three doors in place. You also have a USB port and a 110 outlet. You have a central vacuum cleaner system. A 12 volt car fuse panel. And your 110 breaker boxes down here at the bottom. And the breaker boxes is marked from the top coming down exactly what they are with your 50 amp main being in the center. Same way with your car fuses up here at the top. The car fuses are marked on the lid on the inside. We're going to step just past that. We're going to go up into the living room area. Each one of the chairs has a cup holder on either side of it that with a double tap will turn the lights on in the cup holder and underneath the footrest on the recliners. Each one of the recliners has a strap on the outer side that pulls the strap to recline the recliner out. One more light here that turns the light above the couch on. Couch will butterfly out into a bed on either side of the living room area. They do have the slow rising shades. There is a 110 outlet on either side of the TV in the front. You also have your main curtain for up here in the front of the trailer. We're going to run that TV button up. It does have a 50 inch flat screen TV. Little button on the side runs it up and down. Has an AM, FM, CD, and DVD player for a stereo. On your speakers, you have A, B, C, and D. A is your auditorium, which is in the living room area. B is going to be in your bedroom area. C is going to be in your kitchen area. And D is going to be your two outside speakers. Also has a fireplace in the front of the trailer. It does have hand controls on it, too, down at the bottom to turn it on and off. But it also has a remote in the top drawer of the kitchen. Uh, the bottom of the cabinet on the left hand side is where your power booster for the TV is and your 110 out with the TV and the stereo plug into. All the cabinet doors are self closing. You push them about halfway through and they will automatically shut their self. So all you gotta do is push them about halfway through and they will automatically shut their self. Light. For this slide room over here is in the ceiling panel. Turns it on, turns the two lights above us on. Does have the slow rising shades. There is a window big enough on either side that if something would happen, the trailer would catch on fire. You can access either one of the windows in the living room area for this point up here in the front. We're gonna come right past the kitchen area. You do have the light switch on the wall that turns your decorative lights on. You have your 110 GFI outlet on the back of the kitchen sink. 
and you also have your LP detector, carbon monoxide detector, at the bottom of the kitchen sink. The light above the table has to be turned on by hand, has a little push button in the center of it. The light switch up here in the ceiling turns your decorative lights above the slide room on. There's four chairs for the kitchen table that are strapped to the floor on the other side over there. There is a little storage underneath each one of the four chairs for cards, placemats, stuff like that. We're going to step up into the bedroom area. The first light switch on the wall here turns your step lights on. Your thermostat right above the light switch controls the air conditioner in the front. If you hit the mode button down to the bottom, it's going to turn it on. Fan low speed, fan high speed. AC, AC low, AC auto, and AC high. You'll dial your temperature down for it. Hit that mode button one more time. It shows you the heat in the lower left-hand corner. If you hit that button one more time, it shows you off in the lower right-hand corner. But this thermostat controls the living air conditioner. The one in here on the wall in the bedroom controls the one in the master bedroom. Light switch on the wall turns the lights right above us on. There's two more light switches over the top of the bed. <coughs> the turning lights above the headboard on and the decorative lighting behind the headboard. Since the bed is so long, it has to be flipped up when it comes to the inside of the trailer. Flip that curtain down. Right in here behind us, there is another place for another TV, a 110 outlet to plug it into, a park cable hookup or antenna hookup, and a satellite hookup. And since this is the main bedroom, it also has a fire escape window in here that you can roll out to the front side of the trailer and hit the ground. Your two double doors have a holder that locks them in place while traveling. We're gonna slide them to the sides. We're gonna step in just side inside the bathroom. There's two light switches on the wall. The first light switch turns the lights on. The second light switch turns the decorative lighting in behind the mirror on. We also have the buttons for the exhaust fan in the bathroom area. It has an on and off button. Turn the fan on and turn the fan off. You do have two 110 outlets by the bathroom sinks. The sliding glass door does have a lock holder that holds it in place for travel. The glass doors do need to be locked in place while you're traveling. If you don't, they won't be together when you get to where you're going. <coughs> it does have a pretty good sized stand up shower. Hot water on the left side, cold water on the right side, just like what you would have at home. One more button here on the side. Now this cabinet opens it up. It does have your washer dryer combo. The paperwork for the dryers in the top, paperwork in the bottom for the washer. Brewster ran a cycle on them yesterday. I was going to tell you he washed his pants, but he didn't. He did run a cycle of water through. There is round vents in the ceiling for the air conditioners back here. There is square vents in the floor for the heat. We're going to step back up into the bedroom area one more time. It does have a 110 outlet on either side of the bed and a USB port on either side of the bed. We're going to step down into the half bath. In the half bath. Light switch on the right hand side of the wall as we step in. There is another fan in the ceiling up here that has an on and off button right above it. There is a 110 outlet beside the uh, bathroom sink that is also GFI protected by the outlet in the kitchen. It does have a two shelf medicine cabinet up top and a single foot flush on the toilet on the right hand side. We're going to step just past inside here. Another one of those fans in the kitchen right above me. It has an on and off button for it. And it does have a ceiling fan in it. For the ceiling fan to work, it has to be turned on. And then you have to dial your temperature up for the settings on the fan itself. It does have a 110 outlet beside the stove. In your top drawer, there is the main remote for the TV up front. There's the middle sized remote for the stereo up front. There's also the little remote for the fireplace. And this is one of the most important pieces of paper in the whole trailer. 
This is all your appliances and stuff that's in the trailer. It also has the manufacturer who they're made by, model, and serial number. That way you don't have to take the appliances apart to find the model and serial number if something would happen to go wrong with them. All the rest of the paperwork is in the brown bag in the top drawer right here. The very bottom drawer has your filter for your outside water canister. Your filter wrench. You also have a toilet paper holder. And a sewer hose adapter. Does have a microwave convection oven up at the top. Only thing I can tell you about that is you hit the clock button, let's say it's 1030. Hit the clock button again to the two center eyes of solid. The only reason I set the time on the microwave is so that if I'm gone from the trailer, if I come back, if it doesn't have the right time, I know it has lost 110 power coming to it. There is a light switch up on the ceiling here that turns the decorative lights above the slide room on. The three burners up on top of the stove have a little button for the fan and light for it. Your switches, when you turn them to the on pilot on position, automatically have an igniter that lights them. Same way with your oven. You can turn it to the, the vent on and it will automatically try to light it too. In the bottom of the oven, it also has a extra rack paperwork for the oven. The white knobs turn the igniters on. On your refrigerator, you have an ice plus water filter, smart grid that's Wi-Fi connected, the freezer temperature, the refrigerator temperature, fresh air control, and a locking mechanism. Shows you that it does have water going through it. You can have cubed or crushed ice or water. Both sides of the refrigerator are pretty good size. It does have a filter inside here that goes up inside the box on the right hand side for when you're wanting to have drinking water coming out of it. And then the one in the bottom also has an ice tray where the ice was made this morning. While the uh, three drawers it does have a travel lock that holds it in place that goes in between all three doors and holds the door secured while you're in travel. The two keys for the trailer, the purple key does a front door lock and deadbolt. The gray key does all your outside slam compartment locks. And that's basically everything on your trailer. If you ever have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Thank you.